Hello, welcome to today's Healthline webinar from the American Association of Kidney Patients, titled Open Enrollment, Understanding Medicare versus Medicare Advantage, Determining a Program That's Right for You. My name is Erin Kale, and I am AAKP's Director of Patient Insight, Data Analytics, and Advocacy. I oversee our patient research and education activities, as well as our grassroots engagement activities, such as our ambassador initiative, which comprises highly motivated and engaged patients, caregivers, and living kidney donors around the country and the globe. These individuals have a direct connection to kidney disease and wish to raise awareness and provide support to others navigating the challenges of this chronic disease. AAKP's Healthline webinars fall under our Center for Patient Research and Education. We believe patient and caregiver education is an integral part of treatment and protection of patient lives, and we work to ensure that the patient has a central role in research and guidance that are designed to determine optimal approaches and strategies for providing healthcare services, assistance programs, and access to new products and services. We built the center with the latest polling and engagement technologies to ensure that kidney patients take a central role in informing the federal, academic, and private sector research, shaping the next generation of healthcare services, assistance programs, and innovative new treatments. We encourage you to respond to our flash surveys and other engagement opportunities so we can be sure your voice is heard. We have a great program today. At this time, I would like to introduce AKP's president, Richard Knight. Richard is a former in-center hemodialysis patient who received his kidney transplant over 15 years ago. Richard, I turn things over to you. Thank you, Aaron. Um, <clears throat> and I wanna say that you've done a great job in pulling these webinars together. And I think this one is right up there with the top because this is a topic that's very important to all of our patient members. And I would like to thank everyone who's joining us today. And second, I want to thank Ms. Valerie White. Um, she's going to join us. She's going to provide us some information. And I do want you to know that you just don't come on and do a presentation about Medicare, Medicare Advantage. She had to go through quite a bit in order to prepare for this presentation because any presentation of this nature has to be in compliance with Medicare rules. Typically, um, this population has been taken advantage of. So they wanna make certain that the information provided to you is done so in a certain format, meeting certain requirements, and by someone who is licensed and trained in the area. I don't know if many of you are aware of it, but the open period for signing up for one of these plans is gonna be closing soon. And our role here at AAKP is to provide you some knowledge and information that will help you make the best possible decision for yourselves. And that's very important that you do that from an educational perspective. So today's presentation by Ms. White, a licensed Medicare consultant, is going to do that. Moreover, I wanna take a minute and share with you um, some information that really speaks to the um, the slide that speaks to what's really going on in the industry. And I think that's important. Aaron, if you would go ahead and put that slide up for me. Um, very busy slide, a lot of information going on, but I'll just try to summarize it and go through it. Medicare was a standard product that was provided um, by the federal government. In beginning January 2021, there was legislation that was put in place that gave patients who have chronic kidney disease access to Medicare Advantage, which is similar to Medicare, but it's provided by private sector companies. And this chart just kind of gives you an idea as to what's going on in the industry. As you can see, that the enrollment in Medicare Advantage plans continues to grow from 2000 to 2030 is projected to grow and be as much as 55% of the enrollment of plans overall. And the types of plans that are available to you continues to increase so much to the point that it can be very baffling and confusing as to which plan is the most appropriate one for you. And you can see by the chart, if you look right there at the lower part in the middle, that five companies currently dominate the Medicare Advantage marketplace. 
with United Healthcare being in first position, followed by Humana, the Blues, Blue Cross, Blue Shield, CVS, and followed up by Kaiser Permanente. And <clears throat> if you look at the bottom to the right, you can see that 81% of the plans get bonuses, which means that they either have to have a five-star or four-star rating. What that means is that the quality of the programs, the type of complaints they get are minimized. And finally, you can see the areas of the country that have a higher concentration of citizens who are eligible in that enroll in these programs. So California, for example, which is our largest state by far, you see 45% of the population, eligible population enrolled. And then on the other side of the country, New York, another large state, has 45.5%. And here in Maryland, where I live at, we have 15.7%. And I'm going to say this before I turn it back over to Aaron, is that this information is great. But the important thing that we want you to be aware of, despite the commercials you see on TV, it's more important that you have a plan that's an appropriate fit for you. So we're not advocating Medicare, over Medicare Advantage or vice versa. What we are advocating is that you select a plan that is most appropriate for you. Hence, bringing you a consultant with the insights that Ms. White has to help you make that decision. Aaron, I'm gonna turn it back over to you to formally introduce our guest today. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Richard, and we'll see you again during the, the Q&A portion of the webinar a little bit later on. I'd now like to introduce Valerie White. Valerie is a licensed Medicare specialist with Medicare Solutions, and she is joining us today to share information on Medicare and Medicare Advantage plans to help you determine a program that is the best fit for you. Valerie, thank you so much for your time today. We know this is a really busy time for you, so we appreciate you taking the time to speak with our audience today. And I now turn things over to you. Thank you, Erin. Thank you, Richard. And I'm happy to be here. This is certainly exciting. And Richard hit it right on the head. The plans that are designated should be plan specific towards the person's needs, not towards the company. And just like we mentioned, here at Medicare Solutions, I am a licensed Medicare consultant. With us, we're more consultative than agents. I have to be licensed in order to have these conversations and I have to be licensed in order to write coverage. My experience in the business, true story, started with life insurance and that was only because of a personal experience with my own family. Um, they had purchased a life insurance policy they had over 40 years and it was only worth $2,500. That's what transitioned me into the insurance business. By 2017, getting into the Medicare portion of it, starting off as an agent and then working my way up to a trainer and traveling this country because it just made sense. And as well as now being here at Medicare Solutions, it makes more sense because you're not just an agent, you're more of a consultant. My personal goal with this whole webinar that we're doing, and again, I thank you all for having me, it's truly an honor, is to make sure that I utilize my knowledge and experience to assist as many beneficiaries as I can. We definitely do have a team of people available at your disposal. Me having elderly parents and my mom living in a senior community, I actually do stop and do, I've learned about a lot of the misinformation that was provided to them where they were spending money that was unnecessary. So that gave me, that fueled me even more to do what I do. And I have fun doing it because I get to meet wonderful people every day. And again, this is truly a blessing to be here and being in a position that I am, I know I'm doing what I'm supposed to do in this world because God blesses me every day to wake up and do something I enjoy doing and I have a great time doing it. So definitely, again, it's a pleasure and I'm truly honored to meet such wonderful people who do such great things for many others. We definitely, this is basically letting you know that I don't specifically advocate just for one company. We have multiple streams of companies that we work with. I 
don't advocate just for any company. My job is to be sure, not the word job, my mission is to be sure to make sure that we look at every company to see what best suits the Medicare beneficiary, because as we know, insurance is not one size fit all. With looking at the different parts of Medicare and the components, Medicare is in four standards, four components to it. Part A, which is your inpatient hospital stays of Medicare. You Then you have your Part B of Medicare, which is for your medical services, your doctor visits, lab work, x-rays, anything done on an outpatient basis. The Part C of Medicare is the Advantage Plan. Medicare Advantage plans give an overall comprehensive benefit. And then we have the Part D portion, which is for the prescription drugs. Now, if I can simplify, if a Medicare Advantage plan will include Part A, Part B, and Part D, that's what makes up Part C. Uh, we do have Medicare A and B, which is your original Medicare or traditional Medicare, which is what we are all accustomed to seeing. And it's been in place since 1965. Anyone with a red, white, and blue Medicare card, it'll look like the card below. I want to touch on the Part A portion first for Medicare insurance. This portion is specifically designed for inpatient hospital stays, skilled nursing home facilities, home health care, and hospice. For most people, Medicare is free when you're turning 65 and you or your spouse have worked and paid taxes into it. They call it 10 years or 40 quarters. Once you've met those 10 years or 40 quarters, you've already paid for your Part A portion of Medicare, which will cover you for 60 days in the hospital or the first 20 days in a skilled nursing home facility. And what Medicare doesn't cover, typically supplements will cover on your behalf. Medicare also covers services like lab work, surgeries, doctor visits, that would be the Part B portion, along with medical supplies, as we know as durable medical equipment, and to treat and die, it's considered medically necessary for those certain diseases and conditions. If you are in a Medicare Advantage plan or other Medicare plans, you may have different rules, but your plan will give you at least the same coverage as original Medicare. It has to be as good as Medicare or better than Medicare. And as you can see, the other examples at the bottom. Usually you don't pay for Medicare as long as you work 10 years and pay taxes, you or your spouse. You have to have 40 quarters. If you have less than 40 quarters or 40, 39 points or less, as they call it, you will then have to pay for the Part A of Medicare. And right now, the average cost is $499, and that's going to be the rate for 2022. But most people do get them free. And you certainly are if you're retired from railroad with benefits, Social Security, or you or your spouse have covered government employee. But if you are under 65 and you are receiving Social Security and railroad retirement benefits on your 25th month of having your Social Security benefits, you are then entitled to your Medicare. No questions asked. The Part B portion of Medicare. This is also with the Part A that makes up your original Medicare. Part B covers your outpatient services, doctor visits, lab work, x-ray surgeries, and also your durable medical equipment. Medically necessary services have to be considered in order for your Medicare to certainly cover those services. Preventative services are always included. Anyone turning 65 or is going on Medicare for the first time, you will always get a welcome to Medicare, letting you know that it's time for you to get your physical. And just as you can see at the bottom for the Part B, doctor visit, outpatient services, labs, durable medical equipment, as well as your preventative services. Part B also has a cost. The misconception is, is that once you've worked at least 10 years and pay taxes, or you can work 10 years or 100 years, everyone has to pay a Part B premium. It is not free. And if you don't sign up for your Part B, you can certainly be penalized for not doing so. The Part B premium for the year 2022 is going to be $170.10. 
for this year is $148. So as you can see, the rate is going up. Part B also has a deductible. The Part B deductible for this year is $203. Next year, it's going to be $222. If, excuse me, 233, my apology, for the year 2022. Once you meet your Medicare Part B deductible, Medicare covers 80%, you're responsible for 20%. And that includes all doctor services except for your preventative care. So as you can see, your Part B premium is based on your household income. At the bare minimum for next year, for a single person making $91,000 or less, or a married couple filing jointly $182,000 or less, your Part B premium is going to be $110, excuse me, $170.10. You can see as the income levels increase, the payments do increase. As you can see, from $91,000 up to $114,000 for a single person or even 182,000 to 228,000 for a married couple. It's gonna go up to 3810. So as I can say, as I said in the beginning, Part B is not free. Everyone has to pay a Part B premium. When I mentioned the preventative services that Medicare does cover, all of these services provided covers you under your preventative and screening services. With your Medicare, or any Medicare plan, you do not pay for these services. Preventative care is always going to be a zero dollar copayment. I use the word zero because Medicare doesn't allow the word free when actually presenting any type of Medicare information. If it's a zero dollar, we have to use the term zero dollars, as well as your vaccinations are included. Of course, with the high level of tobacco users in our country, the smoking cessation program is available as well. What Medicare does not cover? Medicare does not cover a lot of several things. And some of them, of course, it makes sense. Um, Long-term care, which means custodial care, if someone's living in your home helping you. If you're in a long-term care facility, of course, you'll be covered. Unfortunately, dental, vision, and hearing with Medicare is not considered to be medically necessary. No one understands why, but it's not considered medically necessary. The only portion of the vision that is covered under Medicare is going to be for maculate degeneration or even glaucoma and sometimes cataracts, but not always. Cosmetic surgery is never going to be covered, acupuncture, nor is podiatrist services. And that one's a mystery as well, since there are programs for diabetics under Medicare Advantage plans. A Part C of Medicare, which is an Advantage plan, it replaces your Medicare, but you have to have Medicare A and B in order to have a Medicare Advantage plan. When thinking of what a Medicare Advantage plan covers, again, if you add the Part A for hospital, if you add the Part B for medical, as well as the Part D for prescription drugs, A plus B plus D equals C. Medicare Advantage plans, your health coverage is taken over by insurance companies, like mentioned previously, United Healthcare, maybe Blue Cross, Cigna. This several companies out there that Medicare contracts with for Medicare Advantage plans. So when you are enrolled into a Medicare Advantage plan, you'll have either a PPO plan, which would be a preferred provider organization. PPO plans don't have, they have in-network benefits, but they also have out-of-network benefits, and you don't need a referral to see a specialist. Those plans are negotiated with Medicare. So what happens is when you join an Advantage plan, say, I'm going to use Humana, for instance. If you join a plan such as, as Humana, Humana pays your medical bills and Medicare reimburses them. That's how the contract works. These plans are designed by Medicare, structured by Medicare, and regulated by Medicare. So looking at the different types of Medicare plans, we've got HMOs, we've got our PPOs. Those plans are designed specifically for your service area, your zip code, your county. 
and there's certainly the majority of the plans are HMO plans, and that was as of 2015 and account for 24% of all the Medicare Advantage plans. Medicare Advantage plans have definitely broadened just from the HMOs and the PPOs. They now have regional PPO plans where it gives you far more access outside of your service area over the United States. You do, you're not required to stay within a specific area. It gives you that freedom to travel need be if you need to go outside of your service area for medical services. Special needs plans are a little differently. Typically, they are HMO plans, which restricts you. The difference between an HMO and a PPO plan, the HMO plan requires your primary care doctor to supply a referral in order for you to be seen by a specialist. But that's not anything you yourself have to worry about. Now, with the dual eligible special needs plans, those are available for folks who have both Medicare and Medicaid. There are certain levels of Medicaid that determines what type of special needs plans that you have available to you. There are also special needs plans if you are institutionalized or having chronic health conditions such as heart attacks, strokes, or even diabetes. The diabetes portion of it, you have to be insulin dependent in order to qualify for that particular chronic condition plan. What you pay out of your pocket for a Medicare Advantage plan depends on the monthly premium, and Medicare Advantage plans are very inexpensive. The premiums can range anywhere from zero, even go as high as 50 to $100. Okay, your only requirement is you must continue to pay your Medicare Part B premium. Some plans have Medicare de have deductibles that you have to meet. A lot of the Advantage plans for the medical services may not have a deductible. What you would be responsible for would be your co-payments, which would be a set dollar amount, or a co-insurance, such as a percentage. A lot of times, if you go outside of your network having a PPO plan, you may be responsible for a coinsurance of 20%, and it can even go as high as 50%. And these amounts are definitely different than what the Medicare, original Medicare is, if you just had your A and B only. The types of services are based on those who accept the Medicare assignments. The Medicare assignments are very important. If the doctor is not a provider of an Advantage plan, and you go see that doctor, you are typically going to be responsible for those out-of-pocket costs, especially if you're in a PPO, which is a preferred provider organization, private fee-for-service plan, or a Medicare savings account, and you can go outside of the network, but you will have a higher cost share. You certainly want to follow the rules of the plan that you're that you contract with and using your network providers so that it does minimize your out-of-pocket expenses. A lot of the Medicare plans will include some additional benefits like dental, vision, and hearing. As I mentioned before, Medicare doesn't consider those to be what's called medically necessary services. But Medicare Advantage plans will provide those services so that you'll have them along with your Medicare A, B, and D and it doesn't matter if you have Medicaid or not, or if you get help from your state. Those plans are available specifically designed to fill in those gaps that are not covered by your original Medicare A and B. These are the 10 things that I wanna make sure that you know, because I don't wanna scare you into thinking you're not gonna have your Medicare. In order for you to have an Advantage plan, you still have to be part of the Medicare program. You still have all your rights and protection with Medicare. That's very important. That's why Medicare regulates these plans. You still get complete Part A and B coverage, which is your Part A for hospital, as well as the Part B for your doctor visits. You can only join a Medicare plan certain times of the year. You can always check the plan to see what services are covered and what your costs are going to be. Following the rules is going to be important, especially for an HMO plan. You must get a referral in order to see a specialist. But again, this is something your primary care doctor's office is supposed to supply to you. If you go to the doctor or supplier out of the network, the services may not be covered and you may have a higher cost share. 
Providers do join the plan and they certainly can leave the plan anytime during the year. If this happens, that's nothing to worry about. There'll be plenty more providers in your area that will actually still be available to you. Medicare Advantage plans do have a yearly limit to expenses that you pay. That's what's called a maximum out of pocket. It's kind of like having a ceiling because if you just have Medicare A and B only, that ceiling never ends. You can pay out to the hundreds of thousands of dollars and go into financial ruin just to, just to cover your medical services. With the Advantage plans, they will certainly cap you out at a maximum out of pocket that you'll pay before you are then covered at 100%. And those figures vary based on the type of plan, but I can certainly assure you it would never go into the hundreds of thousands of dollars. If you decide to stop participating in a Medicare Advantage plan or join another Medicare plan, you can also go back to your original Medicare if you're not happy with the plan. Medicare does not, well, typically, let me take that back. Typically, when you enjoy a Medicare Advantage plan, you're required to be there for a year. However, if you are not happy with your plan because you're not getting the service that you have signed up for, you will contact Medicare and Medicare will put you back to your original Medicare and be sure that they provide you prescription drug coverage. So in the eyes of Medicare, you are considered having what's called credible service, and that's very important. Now, for those of you that have veterans benefits and Medicare, you certainly will get additional service. However, you, if you don't keep your Part B of Medicare, you'll get a penalty. Sometimes the misconception is if you get VA benefits that you don't need your Medicare A and B. That's not correct. When you have veterans benefits, veterans benefits are not considered to be credible coverage. You still must have your Part A and B when you are Medicare eligible, even if you have your veterans benefits. That is what Medicare considers you have incredible coverage because you'll have your A and your B services and your VA benefits most people typically use for their prescription drug costs to minimize their out-of-pocket expenses. Also, Having VA benefits does not permit you from getting a Medicare Advantage plan. You certainly are able to do so, so that you're able to maximize the benefits that you are not gonna get from using your VA benefits. Also just know that many of the Medicare Advantage plans in some areas, I know we've all been saturated with the commercials that you can get your Part B back, just give us a call. That's not the case in every area. Those benefits are service area specific, which means some states have them and some states don't. Some may give you a portion of it back, but in most cases, you'll never get all of those monies back. And each plan will vary on the different types. Um, I can only go into further detail by doing a little bit more compliances I'll use in order to go into those specifics. But just know, please don't take heart to those commercials at there as they are telling you exactly what is correct because they are not. They're very misleading. And you'll always have to go to your specific area to see if those benefits are available to you. Benefits that typically have no monthly costs and an Advantage plan, these are additional benefits that are provided dental benefits, hearing, vision. The dental benefits have become very more comprehensive over the years. They're now including dentures, partials, root canals, crowns. Those have not always been covered in most plans. The vision coverage has expanded as well. They're providing more allowances to more glasses so that you can get glasses that you're needing or it will give you an allowance to cover a good portion of it. Hearing aids are also included as well. In some areas, plans do provide transportation. I will say it's very prevalent here in Florida. A lot of the plans provide transportation. The, gift, the Part B give back, again, it is in the service specific area.
A lot of the plans give you an over-the-counter allowance. The over-the-counter allowance is where the plan would allow you so much. Some plans give you $100, $75, and they'll send you a catalog along with an order form. You can order items like vitamins, toothpaste, band-aids, whatever's in the catalog. You'll get an allowance where you're able to order so much every three months, depending on the plan. All Medicare Advantage plans come with a gym membership. That is the only time I'm, you, I'm allowed to use the word free. If you hear me speak about a plan and I say a $0 premium, $0 deductible, as going through plan-specific information, the gym membership is the only time you can use the word free. The food card has become very popular in a lot of the plans for this year and more for next year as well. 2022 looks better than it has over the years on the different Medicare Advantage plans that are available. The flex spend cards, some plans utilize those. It looks like a credit or debit card and you would use that card towards your dental vision and hearing or other benefits. But again, all of the plans and the benefits varies by the state, which is a service area, including the county and the zip code. 22 Medicare Part A and B premiums, deductibles, and Part D income-related adjustment amount. You'll hear me use the term IRMA. That's what that means, income-related adjustment amount. So we'd already gone over the cost of what Medicare Part A costs. I just wanna do a brief overall as to what we spoke about just a moment ago. All of the Medicare Advantage plans are plan specific, as designed towards your zip code and your service area. No plan is one size fit all. So any person looking into exploring the Medicare Advantage plan option, that's what we're here for. We wanna be sure that the plan that you choose is designed to fit your health care needs. It's not based on company A or company B. We look at all the companies because here at Medicare Solutions, we are a national company and we have access to all the plans. So it gives us a lot more wiggle room to see what's out there and what's available for you. Now, when you have a Medicare Advantage plan, when can you switch? This is going to be extremely important. Right now, we are in the what's called the annual enrollment period, or if someone uses the term AEP. This is the time of the year from October 15th through December 7th, where Medicare does allow you to change your plan to a Medicare Advantage plan or prescription drug plan. You can make these plans, you can look at these plans all throughout the annual enrollment period. If you choose a plan and then you see something else you like, Medicare will allow you to change that plan even during the annual enrollment period between October 15th and December 7th. The last plan you choose is the one you will have beginning January 1st. There are no disqualifiers. Pre-existing conditions are never a factor during the annual enrollment period anyone can enroll. One more thing to add, Medicare also has an additional, I'm not sure if anyone has ever told you about that, but there's an open enrollment period as well from January 1st through March 31st. With the open enrollment period that allows you to change your Medicare Advantage plan to another plan of like coverage, or it allows you to cancel your Medicare Advantage plan, go back to original Medicare and get a prescription drug plan, which is a standalone drug plan. During that period of time, looking at a Medicare supplement may be another option when looking at something to pick up what Medicare doesn't cover. But I will say that you, everything again is on a case-by-case -case basis. And you can only switch to an Advantage plan, to an Advantage plan, a prescription drug plan, to a prescription drug plan, or cancel your Medicare Advantage plan altogether. Before making those decisions, I would always ask that you consider seek counseling before doing so. And one other reason you can make a change is if you have a special enrollment period or what's called an SEP. With a special enrollment period, it allows you to change your plan more than once during the during the year for whatever reason. Let's say if you've moved outside of that service area, 
if you have then become Medicaid eligible. When you become Medicaid eligible, that allows you to enroll into a dual eligible special needs plan. That's one of the beauties of having those special options because with the special needs plans, you'll get more options and more coverage as well. So certainly, I do want to take the time to say thank you for allowing me to present with you all. Thank you so much, Valerie. Wow, this is complex information, but you have certainly provided a, a great breakdown of what is covered under each part of Medicare and, and what Medicare Advantage is. So thank you so much for, for that great presentation. I'd like to also um, bring back Richard so that we can address some questions that we have from our audience members. So one of our first questions here, um, you spoke briefly about the chronic disease plan. Can you touch on that a little bit more, Valerie? Many of our listeners have Medicare coverage due to their diagnosis of end-stage renal disease. Absolutely. Um, chronic, conditions, chronic condition plans, just like Richard pointed out in the beginning of the webinar, once upon a time, if you had a chronic condition such as end-stage renal disease, you were not allowed to get an Advantage plan. You would have to go back, contact Medicare, and they put you on original Medicare and structure your plan in accordance to your health. Now there's chronic special needs plans for those who are diabetic and insulin dependent. Also, stroke and heart attack patients, they have plans available specifically designed for those. Um, the other portion would be for someone who is dual eligible. Being dual eligible also gives you a dual eligibility chronic special needs plan. And does that make sense? I want to say that first. Does that make sense? Yes, I think so. Thank you. Um, so you, you did touch on this a little bit, but there are several different programs out there and people are receiving lots of mail, phone calls, emails from different companies. How do these individuals know which plan is best and most cost effective for their limited income? Great question. When speaking with someone looking at an Advantage plan, the key importance is, is looking at those prescription drugs. What any professional should do, the first thing they should do is if the beneficiary, and I use the word beneficiary because Medicare people are beneficiaries, they're our beneficiaries. If in fact they have any medications, choosing a plan, you wanna put the medications in first. It gives you a hierarchy as to who's going to be the most cost effective and who's going to be the most expensive. You lead there first. The second importance is then making sure that their doctors are participating providers. If in fact their doctors are participating providers, then, then you start doing a process of elimination as to who's going to provide the most comprehensive benefits with the very least amount of out-of-pocket costs. Thank you. So looking at those prescription drugs is very key when Absolutely. Which best for you. Um, and how do you check to see if your current providers are in network for those plans? Do you need to contact the provider individually to ask them or, or do the plan uh, provide information about that? Every company, United Healthcare, Cigna, Aetna, Humana, they all have a provider search in their network. How our company does, because we work with them all, our system is designed to, when we put those doctors in, it lets us know which doctors participate with each plan. It streamlines it so that our Medicare beneficiaries are not contacting every company. That's a lot of legwork for anyone to do. We streamline it for them so we're able to see which providers are going to be available to them and then still looking at the prescription drugs and the benefits to see which one is going to maximize their benefits. Great. Thank you, Valerie. We have a question now for Richard. As a patient, Richard, which option did you choose when you first selected a plan and why did you select that option? 
Well, I'll tell you, I didn't have a Valerie available when I started my started my process. And what I did is, is what many patients do is I went to Medicare.gov. And at least that told me which plans were in my area. You put in your zip code and then you put in some other information and it gives you an idea. So you're not you don't have to deal with the the large mass of plans that you may see advertised on TV. You will probably be shown that you have four or five plans in the area that are eligible or available to you. And then you have to begin the analysis process. And what I did is, is I selected a plan. And then I took that information and contacted someone like Valerie. It was actually someone with her company four years ago. And they helped me go through the process. And I ended up with a different plan, but at least I had a point of reference. And at that time, Medicare Advantage plans were not um, available. And certainly with the flexibility that they have now. So it was it was a daunting task, but it's something that's so important that you have to invest the time into it. And once you find a good, credible consultant that you can work with, you know, you have to let them do their thing in terms of telling you the ins and outs of the different programs that are available. Thank you, Richard. It's great having you on. You're kind of the, the guinea pig sharing what, what has worked for you. <laughs> appreciate that. And, and more importantly, what doesn't work for me, what didn't right. work for me. Yeah. So um, back to Valerie, uh, who can a patient call uh, to get enrolled in an Advantage plan or, or how can they reach somebody to learn more about these plans and what's best for them? Oh, well, absolutely. You can certainly um, share my information here at Medicare Solutions. One of the good things is uh, with us is we do have a team available, very qualified, wonderful people that I work with who will actually take the time to speak with our Medicare beneficiaries and do those needs analysis because that's going to be extremely important. I can't stress the importance of it. It does take time. What I find is when you just speak with an agent who is merely, I need to sell, 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 they're gonna rush you through the process and they'll take you through the ins and out. That's why we're different. We work more consultative instead of just working as agents. But you can certainly contact Medicare Solutions, <coughs> excuse me, my apology, and I'm sure you guys have my contact information. And again, you can certainly reach out to me. If I'm not available, I'll certainly put one of my key people to assist them. Thank you, Valerie. And we, we will put your, uh, your phone number up on the, on the screen shortly so that people can, can contact you. Wonderful. Do uh, some more questions, I remember. Yeah, we do have a few additional questions. Um, okay. and let me know if you know if you can respond to any of these. But um, we have a an audience member asking how Medicare works for children who have ESRD and stage renal disease. Uh, so somebody who is 16 years old, how does Medicare work for them? Medicare is going to work for someone with ESRD in the same capacity as an adult. They don't really deviate from that because it's been working. I'm going to. I can't say it works 100%, but Medicare certainly does. For a child with ESRD, typically they would get Medicare immediately after being diagnosed. That's the same with other conditions like Lou Gehrig's disease. Great, thank you. Um, and we have another listener who is 60 years old. They are still working full time. They said they are receiving health care through their employer. It's a it's one of those 80-20 uh, uh, plans. Mm -hmm. And they're looking into Medicare Advantage plans, but they're wondering if they're too young to pick up Medicare coverage for that 20% out of pocket that they are paying now. The only way they would be Medicare eligible at age 60 if they had gone on Medicare early due to diet, due to disability. If you are still working and you have your credible coverage to your employer, then you won't be Medicare eligible right now. But if you're under 65 and you're on Medicare early due to disability, 
all of those benefits are still available to you as well. Great, thank you. And I know we've received a few questions um, that are, you know, a little bit more specific for the individual. So um, I want to encourage those those individuals to reach out to Medicare Solutions, and we will provide that phone number for you shortly. Um, Richard, I wanted to to turn things back over to you. Um, what was your biggest hurdle in selecting a plan, and and what advice do you have for others that are uh, considering what what is best for them? Well, I think the biggest hurdle is again the the amount of information that's available to you. Then when you begin the process, the letters A, B, C, Part D, they mean nothing to you. Then there's the plan N or the plan F. So it's really something that you have to gain an understanding on and you have to do that quickly because if you're like me, you wait too shortly before the time period closes <laughs> to begin your to begin your analysis. But um, even though I was, at the time I had a transplant, there were still many factors to consider. And one of the most important ones was what happens to me if I stay in the hospital? And I think that's where someone such as uh, Ms. White can help you out because Medicare, if you get a supplement, for example, then they will cover that. But if you have a Medicare Advantage plan, the first five days or seven days, you may have to pay some out of pocket costs. But then you don't have the, with Medicare, you don't have the eye coverage, the dental coverage. You have to buy separate plans for that. So it's a lot of analysis and options that you have to make. And although I did a good job, I thought, um, quite frankly, when I went to Valerie, she showed me some flaws in my program. And not flaws, but just that areas where they were cost savings, which is a flaw to me. And I think it's important that, you know, you, you, you allow yourself to be comfortable to trust enough in the system if you talk with somebody that's credible and certified, which is why we selected Valerie to come out and do this presentation, that they're going to give you in good information and not take advantage of you because they don't represent a single company. They have many arrows in their quiver. So they're in a position where regardless of what they offer to you, they're able to do whatever it is they knew they need to do to make you know, financial um, gains on their end, you know, being paid for the services that they provide. So again, it's, in, it's, it's an incredibly complex system and process, very critical to you. For example, I have many friends who belong to Kaiser, which is great, but if I belong to Kaiser, and I think it's a great organization, but I would have had to change all my doctors. So I chose not to take that path. I wanted to go to a plan, and as she said, you put in your prescriptions, see if they're covered. And then there's a question of tiers and you pay different amounts for different tiers. So it's a lot to it, but it's well worth it. You have to take the time and, you know, do what's going to be, what's going to have a great impact on you. Hopefully you won't have to go into the hospital. Hopefully you won't need the emergency services, but if you do, you want to make certain that you get a plan that's the best fit for you. And as I, I, I want to reference that chart that I put up in the beginning, you have plans, but all plans are not in all parts of the country. You may have a plan that's great for you, but if you travel and that plan doesn't offer you coverage for you traveling, then that's something that you have to consider also. So it's a lot to think about, very complex. And the last thing you want to have to do is to have to worry about this when you're in the hospital or in the emergency room or getting an ambulance. So I hope that answers the question, a lot to it you become educated and then you go to a professional to help you fine tune your decision. And, and don't be afraid to let people compare what you have to what they may be offering. And Absolutely. I did that with her and she said, well, your plan has this and that's good, but this other plan has this, which is better. So you have to be open to making a change because as she said, the plans change frequently. One year plan A may be best for you the next year, another plan may be best for you. That's very true. So, yeah, seek out assistance. Don't don't try to figure this out on your own. Absolutely <laughs> not. <laughs> I promise you, me getting in this field, it happened 
by now nah, I, I don't believe in accidents or coincidence i believe that things happen for a reason and if it wasn't for certain family members or certain dynamics that have happened with folks and i'm a research person i'm gonna find out i'm gonna if i can have it I'm, if i don't know it i'm gonna i know somebody who does know it or i'm gonna keep digging until i do but that is definitely the key thing that rich is stressed on don't be afraid to ask questions always dig a little deeper and i'm gonna ask and we have to ask those questions we don't ask questions about it's against CMS policy, CMS, which means the Center for Medicare and Medicaid Services, to ask anybody what their health issues are. We cannot ask those questions. We can only ask if there's any medications or doctors that you'd like us to look up. And also, what additional benefit is important to you so we know what direction to go in? Thank you so much. Well, Valerie, we appreciate your time today. Do you have any closing thoughts that you'd like to share with our audience? Only thing I have to say is we have until December 7th to make any changes or decisions. And this is now the time to do so because we all know it's extremely busy. If there's anyone that's needing assistance, please do not hesitate to contact us. We'll be happy to look into it. And just like I said, I've got some very capable, trained, licensed individuals that I've already made them aware of this webinar for today. And if need be, I need all hands on deck for this. Thank you so much. And uh, we do have a few closing slides today, but I'd like to go ahead and, and put up that slide that has Valerie's phone number on there. So if you would like to contact Valerie White for a one-on-one -on -one appointment, if you have any specific questions that you would like to have her address, you can contact her at 813-331-8946. Her extension is 1037. As she said, Valerie and her team are committed to helping you find a plan that fits your needs. We hope you all have found this webinar informational. We have a few closing slides to go through. If you are not already a member of AAKP, we encourage you to join us. We offer free membership to patients and family members, as well as living kidney donors. You can join online at aakp.org or by phone. And in order to receive all of the benefits of membership, please be sure to include your email address when signing up. You will be notified by email when opportunities arise where your opinions and experiences are needed to help inform innovation, advance care, and make a meaningful impact to improve lives. We encourage you to respond to our flash surveys and other engagement opportunities to help us elevate the patient voice and change the status quo for kidney disease care. You can also select to receive any of our five different electronic newsletters and subscribe to our print magazine, AAKP Renal Life. We also invite you to follow us on our blog and social media for all the latest news and announcements. AAKP is dedicated to helping patients understand their condition and take control of their healthcare. We are proud to offer a variety of resources for both patients and caregivers. We also offer numerous kidney-friendly recipes with details on the nutritional content and which stage of kidney disease these recipes are good for. By visiting our website at aakp.org and clicking on the store button at the top of the homepage, you can find a variety of educational brochures and online tools to order or download. <clears throat> we encourage you to visit our on-demand webpage where you can find educational sessions from our previous events, such as our Global Innovation Summit, our policy summit and our national patient meeting. We also have a plethora of resources on our coronavirus resource page available at this link on your screen or by clicking on the red button from our aakp.org homepage. We'd again like to thank today's speakers, Valerie White and Richard Knight for sharing information about Medicare and Medicare Advantage plans to help you make an informed decision about which plan may be best for you. We hope you will continue to be informed and stay safe and have a happy holiday season. Thank you.